Hello, my name is Elizabeth Charity, and I want to welcome you to RETV. That's Reality Education Television, taking the education out of the classroom and bringing it into community. Today, you was Miss Liz. Miss Liz, and my special guest is Charles. Charles Price. How yeah. you doing, Charles? Not too bad, Miss Liz. How you doing today? It's such a pleasure having you on here today. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Charles, you know, everybody I hear is just wondering. You know, they, they know I interview so many different people. <laughs> yeah, different people. <laughs> and they all come from different backgrounds. And they all have something unique and different about them. What is so unique and what is so different about you, Charles? Uh, yes, what's different about me is um, what I'm trying to do for gospel, what I'm trying to do for Christ. I'm trying to reach young adults with film. So that's what I'm really trying to do right now. Really? Yeah, yeah. But tell, tell me, tell me, what's the name of it? Uh, well, right now we've produced a web series. It's entitled Sinners Anonymous. It's a uh, fictional it's what? story. It's called Sinners Anonymous. Sinners Anonymous. Anonymous. Yes, ma'am. Explain. Please, <laughs> explain. <laughs> <laughs> it throws people a little bit. But uh, Sinners Anonymous, um, I got it from watching a show where, you know, it was Alcoholics Anonymous going on. Mm -hmm. They were doing a meeting. And it struck it striked me well in that people felt very open as long as their identity was kept secret. So they felt that they could be honest and true. And I feel that's the way we should be with Christ when we come in with our sins, when we come up there, when with our faults. And we need to create a setting where people can feel comfortable to discuss the struggles that they're going through in life and how they go about redeeming themselves in Christ. How do they work through those strongholds and how God can deliver them from them? Hmm. You think God can deliver you from everything? Yeah, everything. I believe God has the power to do anything and everything. So as long as you come to come to him with an open heart, he'll be able to get you through. Okay. Um, give me an example of what you have seen that he has actually happened. That mean, in doing your essay, in doing your... Um, Protection and stuff, as far as yeah. how he's delivered yes, people. Yes, yes, I guess, yes. Um, I mean, have, is any of it a true story? Well, or are all the fictional, or all the, you know, it's just something to catch <laughs> your eye, or just something to listen to. In other words, are they for real? Because, yeah. like, on re uh, reality education TV, we want to be for real. For real. Keep I'm it real, <laughs> keep it real, come on. <laughs> no, yeah, it is, it is all real. You know, um, I gather these stories from people's lives that I know. And I took their situations and I put a realistic twist on them on how the end result can be if you open up your heart to God. I don't think there's anything too powerful for God. He's God, you know. <laughs> so anything he can do, he can do. So I feel that, like in my Sinners Anonymous, there's a person on there that struggles with premarital sex. And, you know, like many men and like many women out there, it's a struggle. It's a struggle to not do that to abide by the God's law that says, you know, wait before your marriage. And so if you've dived, you know, dived into that lifestyle and you're trying to get it straight, it's kind of hard to break that habit. So how do they break that habit? Everybody's <laughs> watching. How do they break that habit? You gotta give Using word. the word of God. <laughs> How do they break that habit? That's what is so that is what's so exciting and interesting and find out how do you break the habit? Come on, we know uh is it fun because there's fornication, uh -huh. homosexuality, uh uh, uh lesbian, uh all of them. Uh, uh, come on, <laughs> all are fall in the same group. I don't know why people think that homosexual is so much worse than that fornication or fornication is so much worse than adultery. They all is a sin. Come yeah. on, in God's eye, it's all going to one big basket, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, 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 that's how it is. And I mean, it's it's in that Bible. It's oh, in that it's, Bible. It's in this Bible. Okay, it's in that Bible. Okay, okay. And I feel let me, like let me, <laughs> okay. Let me let me let me find. Let me find. Let me find. Wait, wait a minute. Let me find. Wait, wait a minute. Let me let me find some. Hey, you know what? You're right. Sorry, we do man. we we do have one right here in the Bible. I'm gonna let you read it. All right. I, I'm gonna let you read it. Uh, I believe it's um it's it's dealing with. Jesus is talking to this prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is talking to this prostitute. It's like, wow. But let, let's see. Let's see. How did Jesus handle this prostitute? I'm going to just you let you read. read. Okay, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's find out how Jesus handled a prostitute. See, starting at the fourth chapter here. Fourth chapter of, um, yeah, fourth chapter of John. Okay. And let's go to right here. 
Starting at the fourth. Okay, yeah. so we're coming from John, the fourth chapter, the first verse, fourth verse. Now he had to go through Samaria, so he can came to a town in Samaria called Sechar, ne near the plot of the ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus tried as he was from the journey, set down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. When a Samaritan woman came to, the, to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. Um, the Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew. I am a Samaritanite woman. Wait a minute. That's a different class right there. Come, <laughs> come on. I mean, she done broke it down. In other words, what a man like you doing talking to me. Yeah. Yeah. R right? But Jesus talks to everybody. Jesus. So. Oh, that, that's a good thing. Yeah. So yeah. that means that if we follow Jesus, do we supposed to talk to everybody? Yeah. Oh, come on. Come on. Mom, be, be for real. If I was to come up and I start talking to this man on the street. Uh-huh. And we know he a pimp. Uh -huh. Come on, come on. What, what, what the first thing you could think? Hey, I mean, a hey, perception. What, 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 the wor what, what, what the world going to think? This woman is talking to a pimp, uh -huh. so he probably think that I'm what? A prostitute. A prostitute. Yeah. Come on, let's go. Let's find out what happened. All right, so let me see here. So how can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritanites. Mm. Jesus answered her, if you, know, if you knew the gift of God and who it was asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw from a well and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you a greater than our father Jacob who has given us a well and drank from it himself and did not also his sons and his flocks. Just stop and right hers. here. Living water. Mm -hmm. What in the world is living water? <laughs> I'm being honest with you. I want to drink a water. What is living water? Living water is that word, man. Oh, that word. Living, that, that word. That what word? That word, that Bible, man. That what? That's that living word. That's that living word. Yeah, that's uh, that living word. That's what he's talking about. She just don't know it yet. Oh, she don't know it yet. Okay. <laughs> no, nah, she's that, just learning. <laughs> she's like, oh, all right. In, in other words, it's like, wait a minute. She, he ain't come. He, she ain't come. He, oh, kind of twisted. But anyhow, I'm going to put it down plain. Jesus is not coming to her the way the other men would come to her. Yeah, correct. Right? Yeah. So he's doing a new twist. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Well, let's find out what happened. Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks from the water I give them will never thirst. Mm, okay. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, go call your husband and Ooh, come back. Oh, stop right there. Stop right there. Jesus is bold. <laughs> I mean, come, come on. Jesus is bold. He come and say, okay, you want, you want my water. Mm -hmm. And so in order to get my water, you got first of all, before I give it to you, you got to go and get your husband. Yeah. He needs something first. <laughs> <laughs> he need, and what was that? It was needs, the truth. Yeah. So he was just breaking it down. Uh -huh. Come on, be for real with yeah. me. Which is what your ministry is doing. Yeah. Breaking it down. Mm -hmm. Being truthful. Yeah. Being honest. Mm -hmm. This is what I struggle with. Mm -hmm. So what you going to do about my struggle? Mm -hmm. What I'm going through with? What I'm going to do? So what did Jesus tell her? Told her to get her husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. So she just came out and told him, look, I don't have no husband. In other words, would you be husband number six? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, that's not for interpretation. That's not for interpretation. Well, that is, that inter episode, that yeah. is an interpretation. But <laughs> come on, in human everyday language, we keep it real. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. We keep it real. All right, let's, what, what did Jesus say? And he says, said to her, Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you have five, hun five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. Oh, <laughs> what does that mean? Is that mean shacking up? Just a little bit. Just a little fornication. Just a little bit of fornication there. Yeah. The a <laughs> little shacking up there. And means that she done slept around with these other five men mm -hmm. that belongs to somebody else. Exactly, yeah. 
Ooh. Letting it know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we keeping it real. Let's go ahead. What, did, what else you say? What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you, a prophet, our fathers worship on this mountain, mm -hmm. but you Jews claim that the place where you must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus declared, believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritan worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and that has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. Okay, let's stop right here. So what Jesus is saying is that, first of all, he's bringing down all social classes. Mm -hmm. When you come and worship to him, it doesn't matter if you're black, white, green, or purple, a Muslim, or mm -hmm. whether you, are, what your denomination is. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether you are, as it said, a Jew or a Gentile. Mm -hmm. It does not matter whether you Arab, Islam, all Christian. Stuff, yeah. in, in, in other words, God said, I'm not looking at none of that. Mm -hmm. So he just don't pull down every social class, just, just, just disregard it. Mm -hmm. Just threw it aside. Mm -hmm. And that's what he just said, right? Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're in church or out of church. Doesn't matter if you're in the ballroom or whether you are somewhere else. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. So when you come to him, you come to him through the spirit. Yeah. And in truth. And in truth. <laughs> Can't forget that truth part. <laughs> got to have that truth in there. Yeah. So in other words, you got to be for real. You got to make true confessions. Mm -hmm. But you also got to be honest with God and you got to be honest with yourself. Honest. Mm -hmm. Now, explain honesty. Come on. I, it, it really depends on what, as you said earlier, what percep perception. What's your perception. No. Yeah, yeah, what your perception is, yeah. right? Come on, my perception could be totally different from your perception. To me, it's like, love the one you will. Come on. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> That is true. That is a perception. Love the, love the one you will. Ah! That is true. Uh, but I just, I just feel that everyone, I think everyone has a piece of truth in them. Everyone knows, has an innate knowledge of what's right and what's wrong. Because if you felt everything you did was right, you wouldn't have a problem doing it in the daylight or in the shadows. That's why people go to club at night. That's why people... You know, when they cheating on their wives or whatever, they do that at night. They drive somewhere far, far away, trying to get away because they know that what they're doing is wrong, but they want to get, so they must get away from prying eyes that would spotlight them doing wrong. Okay, so here is where they really have to have what you call a change of heart. Yeah. In other words, they have to face the truth of what it is mm -hmm. and say, I am, and this is where your confession comes. I am, I'm being honest with you, I am sick and tired of what's going on mm -hmm. in my life right now. I'm sick and tired of fornicating. I'm sick and tired of uh, uh, being homosexual. I'm sick and tired of, and I'm sick and tired of all sexual sins. Mm -hmm. I'm sick and tired of lying. I'm sick and tired of murdering. I'm sick and tired of whatever sin I am doing. I'm just sick of it. And then I gave to the point of the road is throw up my hands. What do I do? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And that's the the truth. That's the truth, yeah. Okay, so now we done came to that part. So what's the word? The word tells you you got to... Word up. <laughs> yeah. Word up. What's the word? You got to come to living... You got to get that living word in you to clean you, to Ooh, get that out of so you. So there's a cleansing going on. Yeah. A deep down cleansing. Because you know cleansing. when you're drinking water, uh -huh. it feels refreshing to you. Uh huh. And you feel a clean of your... You know, it cleans your inside. Water is good for the body because it keeps everything good, keeps everything uh -huh. in working order. That word, that living word that Jesus was talking about to the woman that he's going to provide for does the same thing for your spirit. It does the same thing for your soul. It's going to cleanse that bad, that, that negative stuff that you're doing, that mm -hmm. dirt. You come to God with that and he'll give you a drink of water, that living water. He'll give it to you. Mm -hmm. And you just have to let it work its course. Okay. So you, you got the word there. What about the praise? Praise is necessary. We need to praise too, right? Mm -hmm. Praise is, is what um, actually, as you say, once you get the word, then you can really become before him 
praise in him. Mm -hmm. Right? What about the prayer? What do what we do about the prayer? Prayer prayer I feel is a very encourage it's communication with God, one thing. Direct is. communication. Direct communication with God. In other words, the way the way that this like the Samaritan woman mm -hmm. was sitting there communicating with Jesus mm -hmm. in person. Yeah. Uh, that's the way that we can really communicate with Jesus near mm -hmm. in prayer. Yeah. Through the Spirit. Yes, ma'am. Uh, in, in other words, uh, through His Spirit, when He was born uh, uh, to the Virgin Mary, mm -hmm. um, was it 2,000 years ago? And then when He died, and when He rose again, He was rose up by the spirit of the living God. Mm -hmm. And so when we come in communion with him, we then come in one, in one accord with him, then as his spirit become our spirit. Yeah. Is that right? But you know, I think, I think this is what I think too, what I think God's giving me an enlightenment on. He, and this is the misconception, perception is going back to the perception thing Go is, ahead what the world feels when I let God in, he wants to take over. Uh -huh. God doesn't want to take over. He wants to work with you and he wants to clean you up and he wants to blend and work with you because we all have gifts. We all have different talents and stuff. He wants to use, help you use that talent to edify his name. So we have to work with God. It's a working together with God. You have to let God come into you and work inside you and blend with your spirit that he's giving you, your personality, all that stuff, that all that stuff that he's giving inside you. He wants to work with all of that so that you can edify his name so that he can uplift you to where he wants you to be. Because he know you better than you know yourself. There you go. And not only that, in other words, he would use my personality in one mm -hmm. way, and he would use your personality in your in another way. Yes, ma'am. And but with the two personalities come together, mm -hmm. and we still say, as you said, blending with the personality with Jesus Christ. Yeah, it did. It's happening. Yeah, hey, hey, come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. Yes, it is. Come on. Oh my God. Tell me the rest of it. Give me the oh, rest okay. of so what. Rest what of happened story. after that? Um, the woman called. I know. Um. Let me see. Okay, yeah, 25th verse here. The woman said, I know, that, um, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. And Jesus declared, I who speak to you am he. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you, do, what do you want? Or why are you talking with her? Why are you talking to that woman? Mm -hmm. do you, you see what I'm saying? Mm, no one asked. Mm -mm. So that means that Say, for instance, I go out and I start talking to an uh, uh, individual, uh, say a pimp. Mm -hmm. And if, no, not if, when I share the word of God with him, mm -hmm. he can actually come, a Christian, and he would do like the woman did. Mm -hmm. Whilst everybody else are talking, you know, she's probably hanging around with this pimp mm -hmm. for the wrong reason. Yeah. Well, in reality, in truth, I could be just ministering to him yeah. to get him to come to know Jesus. Yes. Amen? Yes, amen. 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 All right. What happened? What happened? What happened? So then, leaving her water jar, the woman went back up to the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Again, she's coming out with truth. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Could this be Christ? They came out to town to see and made their way toward him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But when he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. His, then his disciples said to each other, could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will, will of him who sent me to finish his work. Do not say four months more and then the harvest. I tell you, open up your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now the reaper draws his wages. Even now the harvest of the crop for eternal life so that he sower and the reaper may be glad to, together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done hard work and you have reaped the benefits of their work. Okay, we can stop right there. 
That is so awesome. That is so awesome because what he is saying is as we look out and we see all of those social issues that mm -hmm. people are facing, there is one answer, and that answer is Jesus. Yeah. Jesus who was born, as we said, we celebrate Christmas. and um, I still say Christmas. <laughs> hmm? I still say Christmas. I say it's Christmas. <laughs> I have that right to say Christmas. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Everybody have a right to say what they what they want to, and mm -hmm. I have that right to say Christmas. Mm -hmm. We are celebrate as we celebrate Christmas, we are celebrate Jesus who brought the true life mm -hmm. to people. Amen. 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 And what he brought was joy, love, and peace. Mm -hmm. All of that come together. So as we say, this Christmas, my gift to you is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. In which you have helped me too. Well, I appreciate it. And I thank you. <laughs> but we, we also want to know a little bit more about your... Um, the web series, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, the web series. Yeah, so... Uh, um, when, is, when, is this, when is it coming out? When is it going to air? And what we're going to do is we're going to let... We're going to sort of close out yeah. with, with, your, with, your, with uh, at least a three minute of your... Sure. Well, okay. Tell um, tell us about it. When it's going to air? And so, Sinners Anonymous. It's going to air on a website. It's going to be www.divinevision.com. It's coming out. It's going to be launching the first weekend in February. And okay. what we're going to do every Friday, an episode is going to be released on there. And we're not only going to be doing web series, but we're going to try to grow into doing discussion things on there on a weekly basis as to you know to add to the theme of. You can come to Christ as honest as you want to be. Everyone has issues. Everyone's dealing with something. And the thing is, you can't, don't be ashamed of what you're dealing with. God can work through that. And there are Christian people out there. There are Christian churches out there all the time, especially like at my church, Living Epistle. We are willing to let you speak about whatever you're dealing with, and we will accept you for who you are. And if you're willing to clean it up, we're willing to help you out. And that's what I want to bring to people. I want to let them know that because God has changed my life and God has come in my life and worked through me and washed me up and cleaned me out. The thing that I saw was I was willing to let that happen. And I was open and honest with God about what I was dealing with. So I know if people can do that, then God can work through you and he can make it prosperous for you. You heard it <laughs> firsthand. And remember, it was right here on RETV with Miss Liz and Gas. Okay, all right. Now I want to tell you a little bit about what uh, we are doing here at um, RETV Youth Five Services. We are working with a group of young people who has actually said had problems in their life, who have had problems in their life, and we are built building a, what you call a non-traditional career center for the homeless, the unemployed, and for the ex-offenders. If you want to come a part of this great work, please give us a call at 571-314-7503. Thank you. Bye-bye. First Corinthians 14 and 33. For well, God isn't an author of confusion. Look, what is going on with you? What's, what's wrong? It's a game called life. It's a game of chess. For many of you playing like checkers. We here like to call this Sinners Anonymous. Uh, this is a event that me and my wife put together for people that are godly people, people that are on the fence, and any, just anyone that um, is having an issue with sin. I'm a demon sent here to destroy you. So Mike, you gonna tell us where you've been at? But I'm going through things at my home. I need help. If we convince the whole world to do whatever they want to do, there'll be no one left to love them. I'm the best at what I do. First Peter 5 and 8 warns you to be on alert.